All right, all right, all right. On the last episode, uh, I had taken this switch out. And uh, it wouldn't click on and off. Now notice the detent. Nice. Before it would only, it would click on. And when you went the other way, it would be mushy to go off. So it wouldn't go off. And uh, I took the switch apart. And it comes apart. Like many old toys, there's those little bent over pieces of metal. You straighten them out, the sections come apart. And you look inside and there might be some dried out grease and you get your Q-tip out. And you clean away the grease. And then the contacts, I clean with an eraser. And I showed you my eraser pens once before. But years ago I used to sell this thing. And you pull a string and it's, it's an ink eraser. And that's what I use to clean the two contacts inside. I only cleaned the contacts that I could see. I didn't go deeper into it. And then I put the thing back together and I clicked it on and off and it still was mushy. So then I got out uh, my bicycling oil, very fine oil. You can also use sewing machine oil. Drop the little single drop in the post that everything rides on. Waited a second and it works. Now, after I got it working, I rewired it up. And last night I, I went into, instead of from AVC, which is automatic volume control, you have your off and you have MVC, which is manual volume control. You have to be in this position to receive sideband. So I started turning the uh, beat frequency oscillator and uh, it wasn't really turning. And this, this, is, this is a thing here that sort of rides on the inside of the of the uh, cup. We'll call this knob a cup. And it rides on the inside. There's also uh, a wire in here that limits. Okay, the limiter. Okay? And uh, this thing was like acting like it had detents. It was making clicking sounds. So I said, all right, tomorrow I'll, I'll investigate it. I'll look into it. Well, this morning I get out my trusty, dusty uh, Allen key. And uh, one of these regular USA Allen key stick it in there and uh, let's get that actually on there and I stuck it in there and I turn it I'm like oh I must have the wrong size no someone actually ruined the uh, the set screws he rounded them off actually on the inside it's actually rounding off the inside of the set screws the set screw is hardened steel and this is an aluminum body so I used all the, the tricks in the book. Penetrating oil. Use this thing to heat it up red hot. It would not come out. I couldn't grip it enough to, to unscrew it, okay? And there's a lip in here. There's a lip in here. So even if you did get it loosened up, you still couldn't get it off. So I had only one option left. All right. This is a Dremel tool. Wait. Okay. And this is a, a Dremel disc. This is like a fiber disc. This can cut through steel and it can cut through aluminum. And I cut it up. I kept cutting. At first I cut uh, the knob, cut around the top here, kept cutting it until I just had the hub. And then I finally, I got it apart and I cut the hub where the uh, set screw is. And then I, here's the pieces that are left. And actually, could see the uh, the set screw uh, was actually seized into the aluminum. See, this aluminum uh, knob, as it gets older around moisture, it gets white powder. It's an oxide, and it seizes up into the set screw. So, if you really know that ahead of time, what you do is you put some penetrating oil in there in each set screw. And then uh, you wait a while, a couple hours. Then you come in with your heat, whether it's a soldering. Uh, I showed you this once before. You take the soldering tip and stick it in the, in, in, the, in the hole on the screw and let it warm up. And then you gently try to use the Allen key. Okay? And then you go and you try it again. You leave the set um, penetrating oil on a little bit longer. You use a little bit more heat. And at some point, you might have to do what I did. You have to cut it up and get it off there. Now, this is ready to come apart. Uh, this unit, this is tight. You should be able to turn this by hand. 
So that's what was, actually this got tight and they couldn't get it apart. So, you know, you put it on eBay, especially that like the switch here didn't work. Okay. But I've been down this road many times before with other radios and I have extra knobs because uh, remember the guy sold me one of these that had a, a mouse nest in it. So when I realized as I cut it open, it was all disgusting inside. I at least salvaged some of the knobs. And that's when I learned that these knobs, uh, people try to get them off the radio and they bodge them. Okay. And I also want to tell you about the, um, I showed you the power supply I made. Uh, this radio pulls the way I did the back to back transformer, 600 milliamps, which is a little over half an amp out of that transformer. And that transformer gets red hot, even though it's a one amp transformer. But I just tell you, if you build it and it gets really hot, that's normal. Okay. As long as you're using a one amp, 24 volt transformer to light the tubes, they'll draw about 400 plus milliamps and then so much for the, the backwards transformer to make your high voltage. But a little by little, I'm telling you stuff nobody else tells you. I looked at their videos, you know, ooh, they get better ones than I get. And uh, they show you stuff real quick. Uh, I did, I, and then it, in my mind right now, bouncing around, there's a guy today, uh, one of my better videos, I showed you how to lay out a Charles Kitchen radio, a regenerative radio. Now, that whole idea of me showing you how I laid it out is for when you go searching for Charles Kitchen, you fall on my video and I say, this is how you, sh you lay it out. This is how you can, you can doctor the controls by using a pad or capacitor. The video is, is, is made for a certain level person that knows how to find a schematic on Google. Well, the guy, you know, it would have been nice if you put the schematic on, I guess it's for the inner group. There is no inner group. There's you and the people that know what they're doing. Okay. It's that simple. And he had a name. I can't say, I, I don't want to say anymore, but there's certain names of people from a certain country. They have a different logic than everybody else. And years ago, we used to make fun of those people, but you can't anymore, but it's a classic, you know, you know, well, where's the schematic for the Charles kitchen? Well, Google's your friend. You know, if I included a link, for the, the, the uh, schematic, the link would disappear after a while. And then they would, they would expect me to keep that link fresh. Uh, what am I up to, 400 videos, 300 videos now? Maybe th maybe 200. Anyway, I had a thousand videos at one time and I constantly had people, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do now each video, basically, I warn you, this is for someone that's got one of these. This is for someone that's having this problem. This is also a warning video if you're thinking to get one of these radios. All right. Now this radio, someone, oh, what do you want that old thing for? <laughs> okay. Now after you get this working, you take the output of the IF can and run it to uh, one of them command radios that's set up for lo uh, lo uh, long wave. And you turn, you dial it into the, the frequency of this IF radio, go into the long wave command radio and guess what the output is three kilohertz wide okay which is incredibly good for a tube set okay and it's called a q q fiber and i also covered in one of my videos how to make a q fiber uh on one out of one tube and and go into another radio another command radio so there's all kinds of options and with a little amount of work and without bodging the radio you can make a really good receiver for ham radio or shortwave. Now, shortwave um, at night between, uh, let's see, uh, three mega cycles and six. There's quite a few stations in there, you know, and that's, that's all I, I want to tell you. Um, the, the reason I do those bands is at night, they're the bands that are the most active. All right, and that's nighttime because it's Betty by time. It's coming up on bedtime, and that's the frequency. Now during the day, I in the, in the case of this radio, it gets two different oldie stations I can put on one when I'm, I'm I'm testing. All right, so this radio does a little bit more than the command radios. Command radios have a limited frequency range for each model, and uh, this radio is not the greatest radio, but 
I told you I wish I had one of these as a kid. Now later on, my father did bring me home a, a Philco 37-650X. And it was a triple tuned front end uh, with the fancy capacitor, uh, three IF cans, had the push-pull output, and it was a good radio. And that's what I used up until uh, I got the NC radio, NC120, whatever it was. So anyway, I did get a regular shortwave radio years later. But when you're growing up and you don't have any money and you wish for certain things, I did not know these radios existed. That's because my neighbors basically, I don't know what they did for a living, a lot of them, but they didn't really know much technical stuff. And uh, we had, I had three neighbors that would always repair everything almost around their house or get help from one of the other guys. And they would, they would intermix their knowledge. People don't do that anymore. They call the guy. All right. And uh, that's why I was very fortunate to grow up around people that would basically try, tell you, at least open it up and look inside. And so many times I would do that out of something I got out of the garbage. And it was just a belt that was missing or a belt that broke or a, a filter capacitor that went bad or a volume control that went bad. And then, like I said, uh, some of the radios, somebody would stick a fork or something into the speaker. All right. So I could pull a radio out of the garbage and fix it and then sell it or trade it away or whatever. But the problem was there were no shortwave bands on those radios because the people in my neighborhood were just as poor as I was. So when they threw something out, it's it, they, they would sit there and say, is it going to be worth it to get it fixed? And then no, it would go in the garbage and I would get it. Now, a couple of the people, when I get the radio out of the garbage, it would be missing the tubes. And I had a big box of tubes in the cellar from other radios that I had. And I'd, I'd find the tubes and put it in there and get the radio working. And then years later, a couple of them asked me if I wanted the tubes. And I said, nah, they were like really surprised. They said, why don't you, I said, I don't want the tubes. I said, that, at that time, I said, I'm on to transistor stuff. Well, what should I do? And I don't know. I don't know. Well, I've been saving them all these years. So I that ain't my problem. You know, it, make it my problem that I don't know what you should do with the tubes you've been saving. Uh, that's the way my neighbors would flip stuff on me. And I wish I was a little bit smarter back then, or I would say wiser. And just, just say, I got to go. I got to go. Is that my mother calling me? I think I got to go. Instead of standing there and entertaining this wackadoodle stuff, like the guy, oh, it'd be nice if you gave a schematic. Uh, schematic. I'm, uh, most of my videos, I'm warning you, they're, they're, they're specific. I have trouble with the word specific. There's a specific reason I do each video. All right? In this case, I'm showing what I'm going through on one of these because there are people out there that bought one of these radios and it's sitting down in the cellar in a box in a puddle of water. Or it's a shelf queen and someday they're going to get to it. My mother used to say my father someday is in the hereafter. And after my father died, all the four pairs of hedge clippers that he was taken, that taken apart that he was going to get to, I took and made one or two pairs out of them, and he would not listen to me. He insisted on using three-in-one oil on hedge clippers, and they would gum up and tar up. And I say, just spray WD-40 on each use. He could not. You can't teach an old dog new trick. You can teach me a new trick. I don't know why, but when you show me something new, I really analyze it. Like if you said to me, stop using three-in-one oil. It, it, it varnishes up and gums up stuff. And you'd show me WD-40. I'd buy a can of WD-40. And then I would try it, which I've done. And and someone told me, he says, every time you use your bicycle, spray WD-40 on the chain and wipe it down with a rag. And all of a sudden, the chain isn't as greasy and dirty as it used to be. And it still stays lubricated. And then every once in a while, you add some bicycle oil to the chain and wipe it down again. But if you go do a lot of bicycle riding, that chain gets really nasty. And it leaves that crap on your pants. In my case, I used to, I used to use a safety pin to, to fold the, the pants over on cold days. And then uh, it would get on your leg. When you had shorts on, it would, the grease would get on your leg. Well, if you spray the, the, the chain, you spray the chain, the dirt, you spray the WD-40 on the chain, and you have the rag on the back. And it, it blows the dirt off. 
into the rag and then you wipe it down. You know, there's things I, I'm always willing to learn new things. And people will recommend things to me and I'll go look it up. That's why, you know, it's a Charles Kitchen radio. Why don't you, before you say, where is this command? How come, you know, blah, 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 it will be nice. Go look up Charles Kitchen and see all that's out there. But no, you're playing make-believe. You're never going to build a thing. And I looked at your videos. Oh, wait, you didn't have any videos. It's very easy to pick on someone when you haven't done any videos. And the one knucklehead had weird, scary weird videos. And I went and looked and I said, oh, just, just blot them out. But he was just sitting there and he's still giving me negatives. But they, they, they're unhappy because they can't do what I'm doing. And believe me, this is struggling for me. Uh, you get 70 years old and you lose your train of thought. It's really hard to do one of these videos. Okay. And when I knew right away that I was screwed on this. And I knew I was had to get the old Dremel tool. I can't tell you how many times I've used this Dremel tool. And this is the Dremel tool from my CNC machine. It's all shimmed up, so it's tight as a, a duck's ass. And that's watertight, or a frog's ass. That's watertight. I think that's it. All right, that's it.